for auto sequence start. And we have a go for auto sequence start. Discovery's onboard computers have primary control of all the vehicle's critical functions. 20. 20 seconds. The sound suppression water system 15. has been activated, protecting Discovery and the launch pad from acoustical energy waves. Go for main engine, go for main engine start. We have main engine start. Two, one, booster ignition, and the final liftoff of Discovery. A tribute to the dedication, hard work, and pride of America's space shuttle team. The shuttle has cleared the tower. Space shuttle now rolling over onto its back with a half-minute ride into orbit. Discovery now making one last reach for the stars. through the area of maximum pressure, reducing the stress on the shuttle as it goes supersonic. Discovery Houston, you are go at throttle up. Commander Steve Lindsay acknowledging the call from Capcom Charlie Hobai as Discovery's three main engines throttle back up. Lindsay is joined on the flight deck by pilot Eric Bowe and mission specialist Al Drew and Nicole Stott. Mission specialist Mike Barrett and Steve Bowen. Discovery's three main engines are burning fuel at a rate that would drain an average swimming pool in about 25 seconds. The engines combined with the solid rocket boosters produce more than 7 million pounds of thrust. One minute, 50 seconds into the flight, we're standing by for separation of the twin solid rocket boosters. Discovery now traveling 2,695 miles an hour. Its altitude 24 miles, downrange from the Kennedy Space Center 29 miles. Booster separation confirmed. Discovery's guidance is now converging as the shuttle's onboard computers fine-tune the flight. Two minutes, 25 seconds into the flight, Discovery traveling 3,189 miles an hour. Its altitude 37 miles, downrange from the Kennedy Space Center 53 miles. Discovery now getting a boost into orbit from its twin orbital maneuvering system engines on either side of the shuttle's tail. These two engines will burn for two minutes and 32 seconds. Discovery, your two-engine TAL, uh, we do have updates to your no-com mode boundaries, and we did launch late into pane one, our only pane. The uh, contingency aboard boundaries we'll use are in plane pl plus 230. Let me know when you're ready to copy the new Presta ATO and Presta Miko. Okay, copy all. Two-engine TAL and ready to copy. Into your Presta ATO 11.9. Presta Miko, 15.4. 11 11.9 and 15.4. That's a good read back on both. Discovery can now make it to emergency landing sites in Europe should one of the engines fail, but all three engines continue to perform as expected. Capcom Charlie Hoba updating the crew there with some uh, updated uh, time information due to the later than planned launch. Three minutes and 50 seconds into the flight, the shuttle traveling 4,700 miles an hour. Discover you are negative return. Negative return. Discovery now traveling too high and too fast to return to the Kennedy Space Center in the event of an engine failure. But all three main engines continue to function as expected. The shuttle now traveling 5,200 miles an hour. Its altitude 62 miles, downrange from the Kennedy Space Center, 170 miles.
Four minutes, 45 seconds into the flight, Discovery traveling 6,200 miles an hour. It's altitude 66 miles. Downrange from KSC, 229 miles. Here inside Mission Control, Flight Director Richard Jones and his team continue to monitor the progress of Discovery's flight. All systems are continuing to perform as expected. Discover you are pressed to ATO. Pressed to ATO. That call from Capcom, Charlie Hobai, indicating that Discovery has enough energy to make it to a low planned orbit should one engine fail at this point. However, all three engines continue to burn as expected. Discover you are single engine ops three. Single engine ops three. Discovery's engines are now swiveling to roll the shuttle to a heads-up position to get better communication with NASA's tracking satellites. Discovery your single-engine Zaragoza 104. Single-engine Zaragoza 104. Discovery can now make it to emergency landing sites in Europe should two engines fail at this point, but the flight continues to go well. Six minutes, 24 seconds into the flight, the shuttle traveling 9,800 miles an hour. Its altitude 67 miles, downrange from the Kennedy Space Center, 447 miles. Miko, BIM for you, nominal shutdown on all three, and Pinto, you'll be go for the plus X and go for the pitch. Chris Miko, nominal shutdown, go for the plus X, go for the pitch. Good read back. That call from Capcom, Charlie Hobai, indicating that Commander Steve Lindsay has a go to press to main engine cutoff as expected in about a minute and a half. Discover you are single engine press. Single engine press. Seven minutes, 15 seconds into Discovery's flight. The shuttle traveling 12,700 miles an hour. Its altitude 66 miles. Downrange from the Kennedy Space Center, 615 miles. Discovery's engines now throttling back to keep the forces on the crew and the shuttle to three times that of gravity. The shuttle traveling 14,000 miles an hour. Less than 30 seconds to go in Discovery's powered flight. We're coming up on main engine cutoff. Main engine cutoff confirmed. Space Shuttle Discovery now in space. External tank separation confirmed. Commander Steve Lindsay will steer the shuttle up to the uh, forward portion of the external tank so that the umbilical well camera can capture some images of it. Discovery, we saw a nominal MECO OHMS 1 not required preliminary TIG for OHMS 2 3730. Welcome to you and your veteran crew back to space. Uh, no OMS-1 required, 3730 preliminary TIG, and uh, thanks a lot. Good to be here. Good deal, Pennell. We'll meet you in the post-OMS-1 tab. Our first views of Space Shuttle Discovery as it bears down on the Kennedy Space Center. The two air data probes on the left and right side of Discovery's nose have been deployed. They are measuring the speed of the wind around the vehicle and updating the airspeed and rate of descent to the onboard computers.
Discovery now 6 minutes, 45 seconds to touchdown. It's speed 1,800 miles an hour. It's altitude 59, excuse me, 15 miles. Range 72 miles. Discovery now dropping 212 feet per second. Discovery, you are on energy approach on the hack. Uh, latest winds now 17 peak 25 out of 150, so it's straight down the runway. We ran the uh, energy numbers uh, with the higher peak wind that we gave you earlier, which was the 18 peak 28, still getting you 2,200 feet down. So we'll call it uh, 2,100 at 195. Okay, copy that. And if I didn't mention it, still nominal shoot. Copy. Capcom Charlie Hoba updating the crew on the winds and the weather. This is a view from the heads up display looking out pilot Eric Bowe's window. Discovery now five minutes from touchdown. It is traveling 850 miles an hour. It's altitude 11 miles. Range to touchdown 35 miles. Discovery continuing to drop 286 feet per second. Its wings are now level. Discovery now traveling 654 miles an hour. About to go subsonic, it's altitude 9 miles, range 27 miles. Four minutes to touchdown. Discovery now approaching the heading alignment circle. This is an imaginary circle created by the microwave landing system. It sits off the end of the runway and is about seven miles in diameter. Commander Steve Lindsay will take over the flight of the shuttle around this circle, which will set it up for final approach. Sonic booms now heard at the Kennedy Space Center announcing Discovery's arrival. Three and a half minutes to touchdown. Discovery beginning this left-hand turn around this heading alignment circle. This will be a 252-degree left-hand turn. Pilot Eric Boa has taken over control of the flight at this point. Discovery traveling 500 miles an hour. It's altitude 5 miles. Discovery, we see you on at the 180. Discovery crossing out over the Atlantic, then back over the eastern edge of Florida. Commander Steve Lindsay back in control of Discovery for the remainder of this heading alignment circle. Two minutes, 30 seconds to touchdown. Discovery traveling 440 miles an hour. It's altitude four miles. Discovery, you are on at the 90. On at the 90. Two minutes to touch down. Discovery traveling 400 miles an hour. Discovery beginning to line up with runway 15. This is the northwest to southeast approach at the Kennedy Space Center.
During this point in the flight, the shuttle's descent rate is 20 times higher and the glide slope is seven times steeper than a commercial airliner. Discovery speed 400 miles an hour, it's altitude two miles, continuing to line up with the runway there at KSC. We agree, you are on and on, and we have good HUD video. Very good. The heads-up display will allow Commander Steve Lindsay to line up Discovery's nose with the runway. You will see two arrows approach from the bottom. He will continue to lift the nose of the shuttle up. Discovery speed 370 miles an hour. This is Space Shuttle Discovery's final minutes of flight. Space Shuttle Discovery now on final approach to the Kennedy Space Center. Just more than 30 seconds to go. Discovery's gear is down and locked. Main gear touchdown. The nose of the shuttle being rotated down toward the flight deck. The parachute being deployed. And nose gear touchdown in the end of a historic journey. And to the ship that has led the way time and time again, we say farewell, Discovery. Discovery Houston, uh, Pinto, great job by you and your crew. That was a great landing in tough conditions, and it was an awesome docked mission that you all had. You were able to take Discovery up to a full 365 degree, or 365 days of actual time on orbit. I think that you'd call that a fleet leader and a leader of any manned vehicle for time in orbit. So job well done. We'll meet you in the post-landing tab for post-landing currently no deltas. And copy that, Scorch, we're headed to 5-3, and uh, I'd like to thank you and your team and all the orbit team for a fantastic mission, as well as the Expedition 26 team on orbit. And I'd also like to thank KSC, who has given us a perfect vehicle from start to finish on her final flight. Well said on all, and we totally agree. Thanks, panel.